The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. My co-hosts with me are Holly, Christine, and the cat. Hello, Hello everyone. <laughs> yes! And we're recording this first day of February. Holy shit, yeah. It's going to be awesome. And this is the first show after MAGFest. And I'm pretty sure Holly has some stories she wouldn't mind sharing on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. It was, it was an interesting MAGFest, let's just say that. Yeah. Uh, I did get Smarty completely shit-faced. <laughs> yes. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> I was really concerned that he wasn't going to make it to his panel the next day, too. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> to, to be fair, Ace Awesome and, and Lord Cat also had a hand in that, um, as did my boyfriend Will, because it was like everybody... And so I was just the host of the party, but... Well, and I did pay for some of the liquor. Oh, but yeah. then they poured him drinks... And it was okay until Ace pulled some Irish cream out of his pocket, which I don't know why Ace was walking around with Irish cream in his pocket, but he was. <laughs> you know, like you do. Right. And added it to Smarty's drink. And I look away, I swear, for like five seconds, and I turn back, and I'm like, where's your drink? And he's like, I, I drank it. And I was like, that was like liquor mixed with liquor mixed with liquor. What, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. No. Needless to say, he texted me after he got back to his room that night and was letting me know that he was throwing up. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, damn. See, see, next time I go to MAGFest, I am going to, I am going to hunt you down, and we are, and, and I am going to, where we are going to have drinkings and, and all of that good stuff going on. I will probably have Becky in tow, because we both drink. Yes. But there was also the, the Vera cosplaying as Holly incident. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I won't, I won't name the person who confused the two of us for each other, but um, they had gotten into a disagreement with me on Facebook and apparently wanted to apologize to me at MAGFest. But apparently they don't know what I look like. <laughs> yeah. And they saw Vera, who, like, granted, if you if you don't know either of us very well, like... If you just asked for a description of us, I could see why you could get confused. Mm -hmm. um, but he, this person started apologizing to Vera, and Vera thought it was somebody else. Oh, dear. Who she was actually upset with, so she let this person have it. Yeah. And then was telling me about this incident at lunch, and I was like, oh, oh, I think that person thought you were me. <laughs> Oops. And she was, she was like, no. And I was like, no, they they were apologizing about the, the shirt gate incident. And she was like, oh, my God. <laughs> wow, no wonder that apology didn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder that apology didn't make sense. I thought it was because they called me a bitch. And I was like, no. <laughs> so that's when I was like, apparently, Beard Gun does a very good cosplay of me. <laughs> apparently. Apparently, and I didn't even realize it. And you know what? This this show goes on her site. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, so yeah. So oh god, S smarty drunk. How is how is he when he's drunk? Is he a fun drunk? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yes. Next magfest, smarty. If you're listening, you and I, we are getting drunk at one of Holly's parties. <laughs> it is going to be fun. We are going to have a blast. I don't remember if you play Pokemon, but if you do, we are having a drunk Pokemon battle. If not, I'll drunkenly Pokemon battle someone else. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, and then I ended up having a what turned out to sort of be an industry party in my room the last night, where it was like I had people from like four or five different sites, and yeah. <laughs> oh, so you you saw like there were flyers in my room and business cards. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, which actually reminded me, I need to print out more business cards for my site, and especially for me personally. I mean, I've got yeah. the, I've got the stuff. I just actually need. A, a free uh, business card editor because, you know, my computer, it came with like a trial for Microsoft Office. That ran mm -hmm. out, and I don't have the money to, you know, up it or whatever, unfortunately. So I need something free. But, yeah. But, you know, I've got the printer. I've got the business cards I can print out. I just need to find a way to do it. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> 
But yeah, MAGFest was a good time. We ate some amazing tacos. Um, taco so, fest. Taco well, that fest. is the most important thing you can do. Yes. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> seriously, it's probably like the best or the second best guacamole I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So. And I'm sitting over here like, you have your guacamole. That's fine. I've never been a big fan of it. Yeah, I'm not a guac fan. Oh, it was it was so good. <laughs> Made it by the table. <laughs> oh, see, that's that's just good for the experience. Right, right. Well, because he was like, he pushes up the cart and he's like, table side guacamole, and I said, I didn't even turn to anyone else at the table. I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, medium. Uh, mild, medium, or hot, and I was like, let's do mild and medium. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, by the way, guys, you're eating guacamole. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, it's guacamole! Right. I mean, granted, I did pay for it, so it was like, you know, it's not like I just ordered it and then was like, whether you guys wanted it or not, ha ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So. Uh... But it, it was really good. Um, peep store, because you can't go to MagFest and not go to the peep store. Yes, of course you would go there. Yes. <laughs> you know, oh, okay. Next time we are both at MAGFest, we need to go to the peep store so I could just film you walking around like a child in a, well, literally in a candy store. Candy store, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because that would be awesome. And I, and I know people would love it. Or at least I'm pretty sure they would. <laughs> oh, so, so yeah, so... I also found something. Becky showed me something um, this week, and I sent it to the two of you. And it's an ad in some magazine or newspaper out of St. Louis. And the ad, it looks like it's an ad for St. Louis cremation. And above it, there is a meme of a little girl wearing a flower, and it says, Don't let the flower fool you. She'll be a teenager soon. <laughs> to quote Becky directly, um, what the shit? <laughs> yeah. It's like I, I don't even get it. I don't. I'm not even. I mean, I mean, I get like the meme on its own. I can get that. You know, she'll be a teenager soon. We all know how teenagers are. They will get deflowered. Yes. Yeah, that happens too. I, I was thinking more of the you know irresponsible, reckless. Like I'm imagining oh, a teenager. Oh, wait, so wait. You didn't get the meme until Kat just said that? Well, no, I got it. I was trying to go a different way. I was trying to go a different way with it than the obvious. No, no, it's it's about getting deflowered. <laughs> and, and see, you know what? A multiple meaning meme. There you go. <laughs> but what this has to do with cremation, I don't know. I mean, do they think that, you know, she's going to get def – are they trying to say she's going to be deflowered and then die of herpes or something? I don't know. I don't think you can. Yes, maybe. I'm just like, what the fuck? I mean, I, I know you. I, I know you know you know funeral homes and crematoriums and all that. They have to advertise because they have to bring in people in because you know people. Right, but, but like, yeah. Okay, so for the record, I don't think that this was like an intentional like thing. I think that somebody probably put in an image as a placeholder and then they forgot to take it out. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're right. It but went like, to print before they even realized what had happened. Yeah, and then they're like, well, shit. Oops. But, like, why would you stick a photo of a little girl <laughs> on a cremation thing? Like, Because no. whoever, like, put this page together as a tremendous troll. <laughs> <laughs> they're oh. like, ha, 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 this is so funny. <laughs> yeah. And now they're like, oh, I don't have a job. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, but yeah, I, I just had to share that a little bit. And speaking of sharing, we actually got something in the uh, in the uh, Tumblr inbox this week. Sweet. We didn't have one last week because I guess people didn't have anything to ask. But there's one question this week, and it, I, I think it's more me centric because I don't think either of you are into Pokemon. Nope. But the question this week from an anonymous, if you could have a single Pokemon, what would it be? And everybody is already – everybody who knows me and is listening is already screaming at their thing, at, at, at their computers or their iPods or wherever the hell they're listening to this. And uh, they would be right. It would be Umbreon because that's my favorite Pokemon. So, yes. <laughs> 
And I'll I'll just take any one of the evolution because they're cute. Sweet. And we'll go from there. Yay. Uh, and and uh, I know nothing about Pokemon. <laughs> okay. See. Uh. I'm I'm still not even like a hundred percent sure on how you pronounce the word. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, no Pokemon, you got it right. Yeah. Or you can say Pokemans. Pokemans. Yeah. Pokemans. Oh, Lordy, so, yeah, that was, that happened. <laughs> but yes, give me an Umbreon. I, I, I will, I will love you, and I will love to see Umbreon. Uh, in fact, in fact, I even had, like, Umbreon-themed uh, hat and fingerless gloves made for me by somebody, uh, like, last year, because I'm just that much of a fan. Uh, so, so, yeah. Nerd! Nerd! Right? I was trying not to say it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, well, but, uh, speaking of nerds and stuff like that, we have our shout-outs. I'm actually going to have mine go last because I'm going to tie it into the first news story. Uh, but, uh, Kat, I'm, I'm going to ask... No, you know I don't have a shout-out to anybody. Okay. <laughs> don't even start. You have surprised me some weeks, though, so, you know. It's true, it's true. <laughs> but it was, like, twice in the whole recording of the show. This is true. This is true. Uh, Holly, how about you? Um, well, so, you know, there's been stuff going on with Channel Awesome. We were not really going to touch that, but um, because of that, the um, Secrets blog has changed. Um, so there's Web Review Confessions, which is apparently what the old blog used to be. Um, and if you're into your happy, fun, secret time with, you know, absolutely no drama or bad things, apparently that's the place for you. Yeah. Or, <laughs> if you actually like real secrets, um, there is um, channelawesomesecrets.tumblr.com and new channelawesomesecrets.tumblr.com. Oh, wow. What is, what is, besides new, what is the difference between the two? Um, they're, they're both new. It's just that the person who made the new Channel Awesome Secrets didn't realize that Channel Awesome Secrets was also a new blog. Oh, okay. So we have two for the price of, I want to say two for the price of one, but I, I don't think that. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey. And, and you know what? The other sites have, have, have Secrets blogs, too. Just, I don't see mm -hmm. them getting used very much. I know Nerdvice has one. I know we have one. Yeah. Yeah, but nobody uses them. Although, hopefully, after the show, people will start using them. I'm I'm curious to see what secrets they would submit about me. <laughs> On any of them, really. I mean, I know I, there's there's like the web review one, which I technically count, even though my video reviews are slow. But well, that was that was part of my thing. I was like, but yeah. not everybody who makes videos that you guys post secret about is a reviewer. Is so true. why would you why would you limit that to web reviewers? Yeah, this is true. And of course, web reviewers. That could also mean text reviewers too, because I know uh, I know one of the guys on our site. You know, he you know he does uh, text reviews of things. Mm -hmm. So you know, hey. Mm. But yeah. But yes, there's also a new site coming to you soon. Um, I'm not going to give out the name of it yet. Um, but listen on a future show and and keep an eye on my Twitter. Yes. Um, but it is going to be a site purely devoted um, to women content creators. Oh, nice. So, yes, that is that is coming soon. Yeah, and content creators, just just for the sake of, of clarity, because, you know, somebody may ask, uh, this includes, like, video, um, articles, articles artwork, yes, it's... et cetera? Yes. Okay, so so this, this is something I, I could very much encourage Becky to go for. Mm -hmm. Because she is an artist, she is an animator. She's actually animated a couple of really cute short animations the past couple of days, <laughs> and they're just so adorable. And you can you can actually find those on her main her main Tumblr is Becky Hop, but she also has a professional one, which I think she links on her main blog. I I, I think it's I want to say it's like Becky Hopkins Design or or Hopkins Design or something like that on Tumblr. She mm -hmm. has it linked on her own. Uh, go and check it out because you know. She makes some really cute little animations. Eee! <laughs> and, and that's not just my bias talking. They really are good. Ah, but uh, but uh, in addition to her, because you should go to, should totally go check her out, I also have my own shout-out, which, again, is going to tie into the first story. And 
I found and looked at and watched Angry Joe's Top 10 Gaming Controversies of 2014. I, I watched it, too. I actually yeah. watched it twice. <laughs> yeah. I, I started to watch it when uh, somebody on Twitter brought it up. Uh, she was like, oh, God, all the controversy and everything. And, and I'm like, controversy? I'm like, and then I see the thing. I'm like, oh, oh, dear. So I started to watch it a little bit, and I thought, wait, oh, no. I'll this be is honest. the date night thing. <laughs> I saw the hashtag Bootygate, and I was really hoping that Bootygate was going to be like an actual controversy and not just something that Joe made up. And that was probably like the, the number one thing that got me interested in the video. And then, <laughs> sorry. Bootygate. I'm, I'm a girl who knows what she likes. Um, <laughs> but um, then I saw the thing about how he had gotten a, a flag, a um, copyright flag on the video, and I was like, fuck that, I'm watching it again! <laughs> yeah? Oh, God. I didn't even know about the copyright flag thing until after I had seen it. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there were some of them. Uh, what was it? The, 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 the... Oh. No, it's not Looker. It, it, it's it's his number ten, the one you just go around and just kill people indiscriminately without any bases in story. Hatred. Yes, hatred. Thank you. You know, I knew about that one. A couple of others, I kind of knew. I was like, oh yeah, and, and a couple of them did spark some discussion with Becky and me. But his number one, we all know what his number one is. Do I yeah. even need to say it? Probably not, but I'm going to say it anyway because that's our first news story. His number one is Gamergate. Oh, because that I am still it still shocks me that it is still a thing that exists. It's only a thing to people who care about Gamergate. Yeah, like uh. it, it was briefly a thing to the world at large, but you, you don't hear about that shit on the news anymore. People don't give a fuck. Yeah. The only people who care are a handful of people on the internet. And I'm sorry, people on the internet who care about this. The rest of the world could not possibly give a fuck. Yeah, for the most part. (laughs) And I say for the most part because that's where our first story comes in. The Gamergate movement, irrecoverably linked to the online harassment of women in the games industry, has drawn the ire of Joss Whedon, Patton Oswalt, Seth Rogen, and a number of other celebrities. Again, but for like five minutes. Yeah, or right. or, or at least an hour in this case. Uh, but people who dox, swat, and threaten women on the internet are set f- to face their biggest challenge yet in early February. Ice T, and and we do mean the rapper and actor. We don't mean the the the, the uh, drink, which is delicious. Uh, excuse me, the rapper, actor, and body count vocalist who plays Odane Finn Tutula. In Law and Order Special <laughs> Victims Unit, I, I have I, I don't watch the show. Tutuola. Tutuola. Thank you. Yeah, I don't watch this show, so I I, I have no basis for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's set to delve into the world of internet harassment in an episode of the show set to air on February 11th. Other things happening on February 11th. I come to my final decision on site pickups. Just throwing that out there, because I'm a whore. <laughs> The episode, titled Intimidation Game, will see the SVU's detective get involved in a case after a female employee is assaulted at a gaming convention. Ice-T and friends will help Rania Punjabi, I guess guess that is, a video game developer facing a barrage of online insults, intimidation, and threats from the male-dominated gaming community as she gears up to release her first game. Parallels with Gamergate, a movement that's been tied to bomb threats, attempts to reveal private information, and direct death threats against women in games, are clear. Law and Order SVU prefaces its episodes, but I swear I can speak today, but they preface, yeah, there's a disclaimer that notes the preceding story, (laughs) the preceding story is fictional. I love (laughs) Yes! You're like, fuck it, we all know what the word is I'm trying to say. Yes, fuck it, we'll do it live. Uh, (laughs) Oh. But it's certainly not the first time the show, now in its 16th season, holy shit, it's been around that long, uh, has lifted from real-world headlines for its inspiration. Viewers will hope Ice-T and his colleagues at the SVU will be able to level up to protect the make-believe game developer. God, where did you get this article from? I don't even remember at this point. Oh. But one person, even one as multi-talented as Ice-T, will have a tough time trying to stop the kind of harassment and abuse real-world women, such as Anita Sarkeesian, receive on a daily basis. You knew it had to happen eventually. 
and you know, I mean, just even in the far back of my mind, it's like, yeah, something like this had to make it onto some kind of primetime TV because enough people know about it. Again, Joss Whedon, Patton uh, Pat Oswalt, Seth Rogen, a number of other celebrities. Now Ice-T is coming into the mix. I, I'm honestly kind of curious. I may actually try and grab it and watch it because I'm curious how this plays out. And then sit back and watch everybody just you know talk about it. What watch people on one side sit there and froth at the mouth at the other people on the other side and vice versa and then just I'm I'm looking forward to all of this because because I, I I want to see everybody's reactions and and by the way by the way to kind of reiterate a little bit something when I talked about uh, Joe's thing when Joe pretty much put his stance out there on Gamergate I started applauding him. <laughs> Just putting that out there, a little non sequitur. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, I look forward to this. How about the two of you? I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, it, it, it's a fictional thing that doesn't have shit to do with Gamergate, basically. Yeah. Like, it has as much to do with Gamergate as any women, woman, women, whatever. <laughs> Getting harassed online has to do with Gamergate. This is a thing that happens every day. It doesn't have shit to do with Gamergate. Yeah. That, that I can agree with, but you know people in Gamergate, they're going to see this, especially with the way the article was worded, which, bear in mind, I read it as I grabbed it from the site, whichever site I grabbed it from, I fucking forget. You know, so, you know, but a show about online harassment, talking about it, and seeing it dealt with and, 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 and all of that stuff, we could use more of that, you know, to bring more attention to it, bring it to light so maybe other people, you know, can, can you know, maybe some change can happen. Hopefully. I, I would almost agree with you, except every time one of these shows tries to address something that even remotely involves the nerd world, they fuck it up. Good point. Remember CSI and the Furries? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly about, what I'm thinking about. They always about demonize go. it. Like, it always ends up turning out badly. Like, mm. I don't think this is going to have any kind of effect the way that they want to. First off, it's too little too late. Like, most people are over Gamergate now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're going to fuck it up. And it's just one more bad light that Hollywood is choosing to shine on gamers. Yeah. Yep. Like, yeah. it's just... The media doesn't treat gamers kindly ever. This is true. I mean, I'm I'm thinking back. What was his name? Oh, oh, oh. Let's see. The guy of last decade. Oh, Jack Thompson. Yeah, that that name comes up, and it still makes me want to want to punch something. Oh, but yeah. So I I honestly I will be catching it because I do want to see it because I am curious. But um, you you know. I mean, if I if I watch it, it's because I like the show. It doesn't have anything to do with the topic at hand. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, so our our next story comes out of France. Ooh la la. A recently born baby named Nutella was renamed by a court in the French city of Valsinies Valsinies. Oh, I don't know. After a judge ruled that the parents' decision to name the child after a food was against the child's interest, according to a news, new report in the paper, La Voix du Nord. I get that right, but I don't get the city's name right. What the, <laughs> uh, the name Nutella given to the child is the trade name of a spread, the court's decision read, according to a translation, and it is contrary to the child's interest to be wearing a name like that can only lead to teasing or disparaging thoughts. Okay. If you're that worried about the child, about, about teasing or what have you, by the way, the judge renamed the child Ella, you know, kids are going to get teased. Kids are going to tease. doesn't matter what your name is, you know? I mean, and I can see where the judge is coming from saying, okay, we want to try and curb, you know, I understand this. We want to curb this as much as possible. But is it me or does it seem like the judge is overstepping a bound a little bit? Well, the article that you sent us does specifically state that the parents didn't even bother to show up for this particular court hearing. Yeah. Which... So, yeah. so it's like if, if the judge is overstepping his boundaries, then clearly the parents aren't stepping up in their own defense. Yeah. Yeah, I think it seems clear that they knew that this was probably going to happen, and they were just like, well, whatever. Yeah. So, so uh... I, you know... Um, but I do feel like it's clear that this is not America, because if this were America, nobody would think twice, and they would be like, shit, that's an awesome name. 
Yeah. No, there was a, there was an instance where somebody had tried to name their kid like in here in America. It was like somebody had tried to name their kid Jesus or something. Yeah. And the, the courts forced them to change it. Yeah, I think it was like in Tennessee or something. Like like you know the judge is like, hey, well that's the name of our savior and everything. It's like, hey, not everybody's Christian, asshole. But right, I think but I feel like different. that's still different uh, on a different level because right. like a friend of mine was a teacher in Chicago and had kids in her class named Orangelo and Lemangelo okay. written out that that's orange jello and lemon jello. Okay. <sighs> that that is weird. Like I I worked at a temp agency. I, I had a client named Chandelier. There was the, the very unfortunately named mini person. She was in fact a little person. Oh god. I'm I'm so glad I'm not the only person who's met somebody named Chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, oh my god, there's more than one person out there named Chandelier. Yeah. Oh my god. Here here's um, something even here's And something the even most scarier. unfortunate name ever. Uh -oh. And she was really the sweetest lady I've, I've ever known. Uh Delabia. Delabia oh, oh, Cameron. Oh dear. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh dear. Although it, it did occur to me, what if the chandelier that Cat met and the chandelier that Holly met were the same person? Maybe there is only one chandelier in the world. <laughs> I mean, Chicago, I St. Did, Louis. Did she work in the mortgage industry? No, and she was a classmate of mine in back in Baltimore. Well, then okay. now. <laughs> okay. I was about to say. Unlikely. Okay, so there is there is more than one chandelier. If your name is Chandelier, right into the show. <laughs> Because that, because that, that, honestly, that sounds kind of awesome. You know, all all sorts of rife with nicknames. Although the judge's reasoning for for changing the names, even if the parents really didn't give a shit, I I think it's like you know I I do understand where he's coming from, but kids gonna get teased anyway. You know. Well, there there is somebody did a study, and I read about this a couple of years ago. Somebody did a study that proved that people with odd names are more likely to become depressed and get bullied and have like a lot of problems in their life versus people with really common names. I, I learned about this because my cousin Spencer, which is already an odd name, wanted to name his son Brooks, which is also kind of an odd name. Mm -hmm. And I was like, come on, Spence, you should know better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I just think, you know, you name your kid something, you know, do it. Parents may be cruel for doing it, but you know, I mean, you could come up with a really, you know, really good nickname for well, pretty much anything. You know, let's see, Nutella. Nickname for Nutella. Um, um, Ella. Well, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's sort of like having having an odd name is is sort of a sentencing. It's like, it's like the boy. Hey, your name is officially Nutella. How how do you go through your life putting that on resumes and getting taken seriously? Well, that's actually a very good question, I, and, that's, and honestly, I would love to see, you know you know see an experiment like this where somebody would have a name like that, and, and see how often they get taken seriously. Uh, although I'm pretty sure lots of people have already performed this 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 uh, um, experiment already throughout history. So. Um, there has, and specifically, it, it's been linked to um, uh, to just making minor changes to names and in this case in the article that i had read in the study i had read it was a man who had changed his name from jose to joe right and got tons and tons and tons more responses to his resume mm -hmm. wow by that slight alteration of his name so wow. yes how you present yourself on your resume it like sadly very sadly it, it, it's going to make a big difference. Yeah. So, and the thing so is, even even though this is like probably a violation of somebody's free speech in France, I, I honestly don't blame the court for doing it. Not one bit. Yeah. I could see as, much, as much as I love Nutella, I really just don't want to ever meet somebody named that because I would do nothing but feel sorry for them. Yeah. Although, to be fair, I, I think Nutella might work better as a middle name. <laughs> well, they, they would probably so, never go by their full name anyway. They would exactly. probably always go by Ella. Yeah, there you go. So, you know, and then only the teachers would know. 
At least while you're in school, my bosses. And then everybody else will be like, oh, your name is Ella. Yeah. Is it short for anything? It's just Ella. <laughs> it, it's like that first day of school when your teacher is calling the names on the list and has to say everybody's names out loud and mm -hmm. then write down if you want a nickname. Yeah. Oh. But, yeah, so... So, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's leave that and let's go to Florida. Take a let's shot. Let's not. We always go to Florida. Why do we keep going to Florida? Because crazy shit keeps happening in Florida. Right. Why do we keep going to Florida? Crazy shit happens in Florida. Yeah. And we could does... just never talk about it. Well, just let that crazy shit happen. Don't give it Don't give it its moment in the spotlight. Just let that shit happen and we don't have to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> although, although this one, um, a Flagler County woman has filed a claim against the Federal Aviation Administration after a plane crash destroyed her home. The oh, fuck? Ew. Florida, Jesus! Like, a, attorney Mark Dwyer filed the claim for his client, Susan Crockett. Crockett's home on Utica Path was hit by a plane January 4th, 2013 in Palm Coast. Crockett managed to scramble out of a window just after the plane hit the home. Holy shit! That is what you... That, that, is, that was close. Three people... Because, you know, planes are not small. You know, generally. Even, even small planes aren't that small. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a small plane could probably take out half of this house, and this is not exactly a small house I'm in right now. So, so that just to give you guys an idea. The three people aboard the beach craft died in the crash, so the, they unfortunately they lost their lives. Uh, my client has suffered physically and mentally and suffered from the loss of her home, which was declared uninhabitable and was raised after the crash. As a result of the crash, she has been paying for her own medical bills, including the cost of surgery from injuries to her shoulder from climbing out her own window, as well as the psychological aftermath of the trauma, Dwyer said. Well, I, I, I can see the trauma because, you know, you're sitting there, you're, you're, you're doing your thing, you're probably watching TV or something, and then all of a sudden, there's a plane in the living room that just barely missed decapitating you by about five inches. I think that would... I, I think that would drive almost anybody into a state of shell shock for a little while. I, I, I know it would me. I'd be like, uh, yeah, I'm going to be having nightmares about this for the next two years. Thank you. Uh, Dwyer said the source of Crockett's significant expense is the lack of insurance by the aircraft's owner. A news release from Dwyer said commercial planes must have insurance, but there is no federal or state requirement for small private planes to carry insurance. Really? You have to insure your car, but you don't have to insure your plane. That's exactly what I was about to say. Just, what the fuck? It's like, yeah, and, and... I mean, granted, you're much more likely to cause damage with your car than with your plane, yeah. but, uh... I'm going to guess that almost always the damage that you're going to cause with your plane is going to be more severe. Yeah. Ugh. And the only way I can force the government to make changes into the current regulation is to file a claim against them, Dwyer said. You know what? I'm all for it. I, I, I'm, I'm honestly all for it because, you know, yeah, she had her home destroyed. She, she had a plane fall almost literally into her face. And, and she had to climb out of the wreckage of her home because of this. You know, she should get some kind of help for it. But the pilot, you know, you know, rest his soul, he doesn't, didn't have insurance. And, and the government says, well, you don't have to have it because you're a plane. And, 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 you know, you're not as likely to have something bad happen. Never mind the fact that, as was stated, you know, if something bad happens with a plane. Plane crashes into something that's going to cause more damage than a car. Don't you need a license in order to fly a plane? I think you do. Yep. So how could you how could you have something that you need a license for but you don't need insurance for? How does that even make sense? I don't know. The government is 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 crazy and fucked up and shit. You know, which, which makes me very glad that Omega was able to get out when she did. <laughs> oh, lordy. Mm. So do either of you have any thoughts before we go on? No, that's just fucked up. Yeah. Florida I, is a terrible place, and please don't live there if you can help it. <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to get out. Sorry, sorry. I'm trying to get out. I'm trying. Oh. But uh, the next one comes out of Colorado. It's been a year since Colorado became the first state in the U.S. to legalize marijuana, and its impact on health, crime, employ employment, and other factors can now be more empirically measured. So, did it bring it out about an apocalypse leaving the streets strewn with out-of-work addicts that some Republicans feared? 
We found there hasn't been much of a change of anything, a Denver police officer told CBC this week. Basically, officers aren't seeing much of a change in how they do police work. Not only has the legislation of cannabis not come with a rise in crime, it has also created thousands of jobs as tourists flock to the city's 60-plus marijuana outlets. Local newspaper was even appointed its first cannabis critic in April. They have cannabis critics! I, I'm not sure. That might be awesome. Yes. <laughs> I can't decide. I, I, I want... Cannabis critics. Yes. Uh, are, are you sure Chella McMullen is not one? Cause, cause, cause I, oh my god, Charlie should be one. He should! He yes! would be the best. <laughs> Charlie, if you're listening, you be, you, 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 you know, apply to be a cannabis critic, because that would be awesome. I'm going to tell him when I have to record our other show tonight. Yes! Do it, do it, do it! You've um, been nominated. <laughs> uh, so the sky isn't falling, a CBC reporter asked the officer. The sky isn't falling, he replied. Impaired driving, property crime, and violent crime were all dropping in Denver prior to legislation, and the trend has only continued. Even drug use among young people is down, the report claims. Colorado's unprecedented move led Washington, Alaska, and Oregon voting for legislation, and this week a bill was filed to legalize it in New York. Cannabis remains a Class B drug in the UK, carrying a prison sentence of f for possession of up to five years. So obviously this was from a British source. Uh, but yeah, what, you know... People like me, and, 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 and I'm pretty sure Josh may have seen, said it a time or two on What the Fuck or something. I'm pretty sure. But, you know, it's, it's, it's things that people like me and others have said. Yeah, you legalize the thing. You regulate it a bit. Things are going to be getting better. And here's your proof. Here's the proof so far right here. You know, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure there are other studies going on that there's other people looking into it and, and probably going to end up coming to the same conclusion. I'm guessing. So, yeah. Uh, why don't we all move to Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, let's not talk about Florida anymore and we'll all just move to Colorado. <laughs> yes, move to Colorado. We'll all become cannabis critics. There you go. <laughs> that would be awesome. Life goal set. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. But we have to come back over to the east. And while it's not Florida, it is three miles north of me. I'm talking Alabama. Ugh. Oh, boy. You only live three miles away from Alabama? Yes. Huh. Literally. You do live in the worst part of Florida. <laughs> I, I live three miles away from Alabama and about 40 to 50 miles away from Georgia. Like, like I am not even kidding. I am in that one special county. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so we get we get both kinds of rednecks here, and we get the nat native crazies too. Oh, but uh, Alabama's convert controversial Supreme Court Chief Justice Roy Moore urged the state's governor on Tuesday to oppose a federal judge's decision to strike down the state's gay marriage ban, saying we must act to oppose such tyranny being imposed by judicial fiat. Moore, known for unsuccessfully trying to block the removal of a plaque bearing the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I'm sorry, tyranny! Oh, a tyr the tyranny! <laughs> yeah. The tyranny of, of two people of the same sex getting married. Oh, no, they're not, they're not heterosexual couples. Though, although I'm pretty sure, you know, and, and, and again, this is being pulled right out of my ass. I'm pretty sure that if, if he looked deep down inside himself, he would prefer they be white, too. Just saying. Because this is Alabama. Yeah. Again, like I said, I'm pulling that out of my ass. Mm. Uh. Moore, known for unsuccessfully trying to block the removal of a plaque bearing the Ten Commandments that he'd installed at the state courthouse in 2001, told Governor Roy Bentley in a letter that nothing in Alabama's constitution allowed for the federal government to, quote-unquote, redefine marriage to include gays and lesbians. The state Supreme Court, he said, has described marriage as a, quote-unquote, divine institution. Right! Divine institution! Um, well, who was it? Who was it? Who Divine was it? institution regulated by the government. Yeah. And I, I, and I just want to ask uh, uh, Chief Justice Moore, um, how many times have you been married? If you've been married more than once, then shut your, fu then shut your fucking face hole about the, the, the sanctity of marriage or, or marriage being a divine institution. There are a lot of other people, you know, <clears throat> Newt Gingrich, who need to shut the fuck up about it as well. Oh. Today, the destruction of that institution is upon us by federal courts using 
specious pretext based on equal protection, due process, and full faith and credit clauses of the United States Constitution, he wrote in a letter posted to Alabama.com. After he looked up some words in a thesaurus, of course. Of course. Moore was reacting to the decision on Friday by U.S. District Judge Cal- Cali V.S. Valley V.S. Grenade? Grenade? Mm. To throw out Alabama's same sex marriage ban, as it should. She ordered a 14 day stay on her ruling on Sunday to allow the state time to appeal, though she said the state wasn't likely to succeed. Moore said Alabama laws have always recognized the biblical ad. ad- Admonition stated by our Lord, which he said limited marriage to opposite sex couples. Um, okay, 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 okay. Judge okay. Moore, I, 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 I want you, I hope you're listening. And if he's not, somebody send the show to him, because I want him to hear this. Um, when it comes to uh, your religion and using your Bible to, to, to keep people from being happy because you, and, and, you know, because your religion supposedly says so, um, let's let's take for a moment that it, that it's true let's let's take this for a moment then um if your bible is saying that it is right for the government to deny people happiness because you know for whatever arbitrary reason that said gay couple may not believe in then uh, i'm just gonna say it your bible and your religion is fucking wrong it's, it's sorry this is how it is because yeah you may believe that same-sex couples are are, are this evil thing or, or this bad thing or whatever you may even think it's unnatural which has been proven false over and over and over again you know but that doesn't mean you get to sit in government and force other people to conform to your personal beliefs fuck you judge no no chief justice Moore. fuck you ah ah but Excluding Alabama, 36 states plus the District of Columbia allow gay men and lesbians to wed. The Supreme Court said in mid-January that it would hear a challenge from four states to the same-sex marriage bans, with many experts predicting that the nation's highest court will finally settle the gay marriage question nationwide. And when it does happen, and when same-sex marriage is, is legal and the law of the fucking land, I am going to to enjoy watching all of these conservative talking heads explode. Because what they keep forgetting, what they don't realize, is the fact that the states... It, it, think think of the United States as 50 kids staying at the parents' house. All right? That's a big fucking house. All right? And each kid has their own room. They can do the rules as, as you know, to a degree of what they want, you know? And... When the parents, that would be, you know, the government, you know, the president, the Congress, and all of that good stuff, when they set something that affects everybody in the house, everybody has to follow it. And I'm, I'm just, it's just, it's, this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, the law says, you know, you know, pursuit of happiness. That, that's, that's one of the things, right? And with these same-sex marriage bans, you are denying people the right to their pursuit of happiness because it doesn't harm anybody else it, it, it just makes you go ick and because it makes you go ick no, it shouldn't exist Whew. thoughts well I don't know we were just waiting for you to come down off your soapbox there son yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I earned my motor mouth T- take a breath take a breath Whew. No, I, I honestly don't have anything to say. You pretty much said literally everything. Yeah. yeah. I tend to do that. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. But, yeah. Oh, so this next one, um, I think this one is, ah, out of Pennsylvania. Okay. Darby Burrow. Police have charged the parents of the one-month-old infant whose face was eaten by ferrets last weekend with child endangerment. What the fuck? What? A warrant charging Bernie James Fryam, 42, and Jessica Lynn Binnells, 24. Hey, their, their ages kind of flip back and forth. I like that. The, with five counts of endangering the welfare of children was filed on Saturday, according to online court records. Neither Frame nor Binnells, both of whom reportedly have developmental disabilities, have been arraigned as of Monday morning. Uh, the infant girl was attacked Thursday as she sat strapped into a car seat in the living room of the couple's home on the 300 block of Poplar Street. 
According to the police, the three ferrets escaped from their cloth enclosure. Why would you keep ferrets in a cloth enclosure? Uh, I mean, if you have to keep them pinned up somehow, wouldn't a cage work better? Uh. Anyway, they attacked the one-month-old baby who was left alone on the first floor. Her parents were upstairs when the attack occurred. Manales heard the baby's screams and ran downstairs to pull the animals off the infant. You know, it, it's just... Holy shit! Yeah, let's see, the couple has five children, all under the age of five. All of the children also have special needs, and the only food in the house for the children was peanut butter and a can of cranberry sauce. What? Holy shit! Mm -hmm. These people should never get their children back, ever. No! No! It's like, no! Ah! I mean, it's like, and then the thing is, like, ah, what? You're barely able to take care of five kids. Why do you have ferrets? No, they're clearly not able to take care of five kids. Okay, you not, okay, I stand corrected. They're not able to take care of five kids. Why the fuck do you have ferrets? Why? Pets in general. The article says they have a whole shit ton of pets. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I did. I did skip over that, didn't I? Yeah, six cats and two dogs. What the fuck? I mean, I love kitties. I would love to have like like two or three kitties just running around my you know my room right now while I'm doing the show, and and then every every now and then I would be distracted by a little kitty, you know. It might make Where are these people's things. families? Like, why are they letting this continue? I know, right? Ugh. Uh, so, uh, but according to the article, the older children were removed from the house, and they're being cared for by relatives. So, they they got some kind of re relations somehow, somewhere. So, so, I don't, but I don't trust those people at all. Like, you, how do you not know that this house only has peanut butter and a can of cranberry sauce? Which, by the way, no child under the age of five is going to be able to open anyway. Yeah, I mean, the parents would have to do it. And... The animals are clearly starving since they ate a baby's face. Like, why wasn't somebody actually looking out for these children? I know, right? I mean, it's, I mean, hell. I mean, I know my family, you know, my extended family, we're, we're kind of fucked up in a lot of ways. But even then, if we know that somebody is in dire straits like this, we're going to go over there. We're going to fucking help them if we can. What the fuck is wrong with these people? How do you have that many kids with special needs? Well, because both of the parents have special needs. Yeah, I, I think that's just a case of genetics there, I think. Uh, oh, dear, but just, god that's, damn it. It's so crazy. How do you have two people who have developmental disabilities, and then they have that many kids, and they don't have somebody coming in and checking in on them? This is where Holly's right. The, that extended family must be pretty fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say this, um, and this isn't, I mean, I think this about everybody. This has nothing to do with the fact that they have disabilities. But if you have to have a, a license to operate a motor vehicle, mm -hmm. why are you not also held accountable in some way for the life of caring for the life of another living being? I know, right? Because uh, there, there have been... You know, I know I've I've heard people joke about having like parent licenses before. You know, mm -hmm. you have to be a lot you have to, you know, have a license to be a parent. And cases like this are, are, are a real strong push towards that end because uh, I mean, you know, whatever issues aside, and, and to me it doesn't matter that they have, you know, the disabilities because you know what? There are people with disabilities that are doing just fine as parents. Yeah. That they're fine. That they're, you know, they're functional. They're doing the thing. They're doing the best that they can, and they're doing okay. They're they're not starving along with their children. I'm assuming they're starving along with their children. You know, they don't have starving pets of to the sumpteenth degree. You know, that are going around eating their kids' faces and having their house infested with fleas and mites. <laughs> yeah. it, and by the way, the whole like you should have a license to to. Like, be a parent, a pet owner, too. Yeah. Really, for real. Yeah, well, that's why I said just another living thing. Like, yeah. If you are, if you are exactly. responsible for something else's life, there should be some sort of consequence to that. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, this particular consequence to failing at parenting is, is having the children removed. And I think I said Right, that. but the unfortunate part is 
unfortunately, it had to get to that point before they were right. Ready. It had to get to the, this point. Yeah, well, Whereas, like, if you just had to show your fitness as a parent, like, because you have to be able to operate a motor vehicle, mm -hmm. like, why? <laughs> what you know? That that's why they have like like what was it like the home economics classes where you have where you, where you take care of a baby for a little bit. They taught you not this all. Shit. Not all schools have that though. We didn't do that in my school. We, I, I, like, we learned how to make like two foods and soda pot holder. Oh wow. Let's see. I know we had a home ec thing in in our school. I think maybe infant care might have been part of it. I know part of it was like a cooking thing. Part of it was like CPR of all things. Um, you know, just different things. It, it's basically one of those courses where you just throw in things that you that they think you might need to know. Some of it you <laughs> do. You know, CPR is a good thing to learn, sure. You know, cooking, also a good thing to know, sure. But I don't remember there being a baby thing in there. That might have been a different – that might have even been a different class too. I don't know. I think I had to do like baby rearing and psychology class for some reason. Yeah, which I can kind of see that, you know, because – because it's not just a, a physical thing. Can you care for this, you know, potential baby here? But, you know, it also, you know, the study of how your mind handles it, you know? That's how I, that's how I can see it. Yeah, but it wasn't a required class. So literally the only people who had to do that experiment were the psychology students. Ah, okay. Shit, I would have signed up for that. that. That's kind of, that would be kind of fun. I'm not even a psychology student. <laughs> oh, Oh, dear. Oh, God, Louisiana. Oh, yes, dear. we must. Yes, we must. Louisiana governor and possible Republican presidential candidate Bobby Jindal on Sunday said that atheists shouldn't be concerned that he headline an event for a so-called hate group over the weekend because it was a time-honored tradition for U.S. leaders. A time-honored tradition for U.S. leaders to, to headline an event for hate groups, apparently. I mean, how far back are you going? I mean, are you going back to, like, like southern U.S. leaders headlining or, or – or, well, I, well, okay, this – let's see. Post-Civil War, was it southern U.S. leaders headlining for, like, KKK? I'm just thinking. Oh. Yeah, well, ABC host George Stephanopoulos, Stephanopoulos – I think I got it – asked Jindal on Sunday how he explained to non-believers his decision to be the keynote speaker at an event hosted by the American Family Association, which has been designated a hate group by the Southern Poverty Law Center for its views on LGBT people. Jindal had concluded his speech at the response to call to prayer for a Nation in Crisis event by announcing that our God wins. I was struck by that final line, our, our God wins, Stephanopoulos said. How do you think that lands in a country of 320 million people who or many different kinds of kids of spirit, spirituality, many different kids of faith, many who believe in no God at all. It's a time-honored tradition, going back to our nation's founders, for our presidents, for our leaders to turn to God for guidance, for wisdom. Jindal insisted. George Washington did it. Abraham Lincoln did it. Harry Truman did it. So absolutely, I think this idea of praying to God for wisdom and guidance is as old as our country. Somebody, I, I, I have a feeling somebody else is going to want, is, is having something to say. This is just so dumb. Yeah. It's like, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, because, well, number one, you know. These people weren't all the same fucking religion. There you go. <laughs> God damn it. There is that. They all weren't the same fucking religion. This is true. Also, if, if you're going to talk about people turning to God or any God or any deity for wisdom, that's older than our country. See, there was these times called the Dark Ages. You know, People did that on a regular basis then. They did it before then. They did it back in ancient Greece when they turned to the pantheon of gods and goddesses for wisdom or, or advice or what have you. Or just say, hey, hey uh, Zeus, can you like smite this motherfucker for me? You know, that sort of thing. You know, so it, it is it is older than you think, Governor Jindal. Yeah, Governor. It, it is definitely older than you think. So, yeah. And the Louisiana Republican pointed out that a majority of our people are Christians, but we don't discriminate against anybody. Bullshit! <laughs> bullshit! <laughs> uh, fucking uh, bullshit! Uh... Yeah, 
And, and, and let's see. You, you, are giving, you, you, you were a keynote speaker at an event hosted by the American Family Association designated a hate group. And they stand against things like same-sex marriage. They probably, in fact, I'm willing to bet that he would have the kind of mindset that if he came up to me, that if I went up to him and asked him for a job, he asked what religion I, that, that I am. By the way, for those playing the home game, I am an agnostic atheist. I would not be surprised if he found this out and told me, yeah, you cannot work here because you are not a Christian. I, 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 I firmly believe that, that he would do that. Obviously, hashtag not all Christians, obviously, but, you know, he would be one of them. And it's people like that. It's Christians like him that make Christians like my girlfriend look bad and piss them off, too. Ugh. Uh. But when it came to discriminating against LGBT people, Jindal said that he would back a constitutional amendment to allow states to ban same-sex marriage if the Supreme Court legalized it. Um, remember the analogy I had with the house and, and the rooms and everything? Yeah, think of that again. I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. Gentle, yeah, we all know that. Your faith, you know, yeah, your faith says it's between a man and a woman, even though your Bible doesn't, you know, outside of that one thing in Leviticus, it really doesn't matter. And anything in the New Testament that might claim otherwise was not from your, was not from your fucking Savior. Okay, you know what Jesus would say about that? Nothing, because Jesus didn't give a shit. You know what Jesus was like? He was like, you know what? Love, love everybody. Love, you know, love your neighbor, love your enemies, you know, whatever. Jesus was cool as shit. And, ah, and there I go again. <laughs> uh, do, you, do either of you have anything to add? Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God it's damn. just so fucking dumb. It is. And it's the dumbest things that are setting me off this week. Holy shit. Oh. Oh, lordy. Okay. So, we all turn to God to, for wisdom. It's like, oh, oh. Do you know anything about the history of this country? Could, could you look it up, please? Yeah. You're in a position of power in this God country. damn it, I learned it in the eighth grade. Like, wh why is this still so hard for you to grasp? Uh because he's, he's, he's a moron, and, and he needs to be thrown out of office. But, you know, you know we, we, we'll, we, we do what we can. Uh, so, police in York have charged a 22-year-old man in connection with the shooting of a teenager on Saturday afternoon. There's whiplash for you. Jerquan Dixon of the 1000 block of West King Street is facing two counts of felony aggravated assault and recklessly endangering another person. That's an actual charge? Huh. According to charging documents, police were dispatched to the area of East King Street and Pine Street at 2.03 p.m. for a report of shots fired. A witness at the scene told police he noticed a group of juveniles running in that block and one of them had a snowball. The witness then said he, he heard at least six gunshots and saw a man, described as Dixon, emerge from an alley, get into the driver's seat of a maroon sedan and speed off. Short time later, police located Dixon and his sedan in the 1000 block of West King Street, and Dixon told the police that he did own a handgun, but it was at a different address. During the interview, Dixon also said that after his car was hit by snowballs, he got out of the car and followed the group of kids to Pine Street and then into Forey Avenue. This is so detailed. Where he said he fired his handgun once into the air and then several rounds into the snow in the direction of the juveniles. There's your mistake right there, sir. After obtaining a search warrant, police searched the home on the 300 block of West King Street, found a 9mm Smith & Wesson in a laundry basket in the third floor bedroom, document state. At the scene of the shooting, police said they found six spent 9mm shell casings in the middle of Prince Alley. Police believe Dixon is the person responsible for firing the gunshots and striking the teenager. The victim was taken to York Hospital with several gunshot wounds. His injuries are non-life-threatening, police said. Over snowballs! Yeah. Over a snowball. Like, I had to go back and reread that, and yeah. Like, and one of them had a snowball. Like, that that's not a fair fight if you're defending yourself with a snowball yeah. and you're being chased with somebody with a gun. Yeah, even if the snowball had a rock in it, that's still not a fair fight. Because, yeah, you know, you hit, you know, it, it, you could hit the rock. The rock could hit in just the right way and knock them out, sure. But it's not as likely to do that as it as a bullet is to rip through your organs. 
you know, is Gun gonna win here? Ugh. It's like, really, dude. I wish I knew what this was a what was about. Like, was it just about snowballs, or like, what was what was the original fight about? Uh, that's what I want to know. I'm I'm assuming. Well, well, it's weird that it doesn't say. Well, no. Well, well, well. The guy said his car was hit by snowballs. So. Oh dear, that's the worst possible thing that could ever happen. Yeah. So so it's like, wait, you went chased down and shot shot at a bunch of kids because they hit your car with a snowball. <laughs> Never mind the fact. That... Where, yeah, it was just that it also said that his car was hit by snowballs. So I I thought that maybe that there was more to it. Yeah. Maybe there is. I wasn't able to find anything. If somebody else is a- found something and is able to add to it, feel free. You know? But it's just, even then, even then, I mean, just, what the fuck, dude? But here's here's the thing that everybody should know. Mm-hmm. Firing your gun into the air is not safe. Just because you shot a bullet into the air does not mean it won't hit somebody when it fucking lands. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of a story. There was a bunch of people at some kind of KKK meeting or whatever, shot the gun up into the air, bullet came back down, hit the guy in the top of the skull and came out and came out the bottom. Somehow the guy survived. Yeah. But it just like, yeah. That is not a safe thing to do. Just because you see people do it on movies doesn't mean that it's okay. Yeah, because see, yeah, I, I, I know the effect in movies is supposed to be, you know, an actual gunshot or whatever. But in reality, they're using blanks. Oh, and 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 you know what? I, I we we are definitely going over the normal hour limit here because this because I, I want to get to this last story because oh my god, what the fuck? And this is out of Texas. This has been a week of oh my god, what the fuck? I think uh, this is out of Texas, Gustine, Texas, in Gustine, population four hundred fifty-seven. What happens at the schoolhouse affects nearly everyone, and something happened Monday that is causing a big controversy in this small town. I felt uncomfortable and I didn't want to do it, said 11-year-old Eliza Medina. I felt like they violated my privacy. She was one of about two dozen elementary students who were rounded up in the small town 90 miles southwest of Fort Worth. Eliza's mother, Maria Medina, said boys were taken to one room, girls to another. They were ordered to pull down their pests pants to check them to see if they could find anything. This is getting really awkward. Yeah. Eliza's mom explained that the educators have been finding poop on the gym floor. What? Ew! Yeah. Can you, She can imagine... I mean, first... that's, that's just gross, but yeah. like, there are other ways to find out where the poop came from. Yeah, just, just, no. And, and it seems like, and it seems like the superintendent, Ken Baugh, you know, he, he acknowledged that making the kids drop their drawers goes too far. That's not appropriate, and we do not condone that, so you would take disciplinary action, he was quoted as saying. But he said early into the investigation, his understanding is that the children were told to lower their pants just a little. Uh, it's just... It's just uh, oh. First of all, who the hell is shitting on the gym floor? Why the hell would you shit on the gym floor? I've been frustrated with schools, but never enough to shit on the damn thing. It, well, it's an elementary school. People have accidents. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, accidents can happen. Okay, okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, why my brain didn't immediately click to that, I don't know. Still. You know. Well, and and who thinks that, like, no, of course people don't believe that they were just asked to drop their pants a little. Because you're never going to find anything just by seeing the band of somebody's underwear. No, you'd have to lower them down pretty far. As, as you know, Eliza Medina was, was uh, insisting, you know, to where your butt is, is how she mm-hmm. put it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can see that. And, and you know what? It, it's definitely, you know... I, I would not do this. In fact, I think this is the worst way of going about this. You know, it's just, uh There has to be, there would have to be a better way to solve it. I do not possess the mental capacity to find one, though. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, hopefully somebody over there will. It's just, god damn. Uh, I, I know you want to find the culprits, guys, but that's not the way to do it. No, no. 
Oh. But yeah, I, I, I just wanted to get to that one because holy shit balls. No pun intended. Oh, mm-hmm. oh lordy. Uh, but hopefully hopefully the investigation will have wrapped up by now and and everything is better or things have improved or maybe they found a way. Who knows? Uh, so with that, I, I have I have I am done motor mouthing right now. Do you have, do you two have any thoughts, or did I I just you know? Shit happens. <laughs> Shit happens. Shit happens. Shit happens. There we go. We know this to be true. Yes. Oh. Uh, well. Okay. Okay. I I I was I was about to end it, but then there's just this this short one there that is that does seem kind of important. Also in Texas. Uh, lawmakers in Texas are considering a bill that would allow teachers to use deadly force against students. The Teachers Protection Act, filed by Representative Dan Flynn of uh, Van, a Republican, by the way, would protect teachers from prosecution for killing students they believe are a threat to other students or anyone else on school grounds. Please tell me I'm not the only one that can see the potential for things going so much wrong in a very racial way here. Am I the only one seeing that? Am I? The problem yeah. with letting everybody carry guns, and especially guns in schools, is that you're one person's bad day away from killing a lot of people. Yeah, and it's not e- not necessarily even going to be that person's bad day intention to kill more than just one or two motherfuckers. Because you're going to have a bunch of people not trained in using firearms, firing wildly, not realizing the guns have fucking recoil. So they fire, they accidentally fire a few times. You know, they may hit their initial target, sure. Or maybe not. They may miss the target and hit the poor teacher in the back who's just trying to hide under the goddamn desk. You know? It's just, ugh. Texas law currently allows educators to use reasonable force against students to be protected from disciplinary proceedings. A lobbyist for the Association of Texas Professional Educators said the legislation doesn't add any new protections for teachers that don't already exist under the state's self-defense laws. Yeah? Uh, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry, I did skip one thing. Teachers would also be permitted to kill students to protect school property under the measure, which would protect them from civil liability if they use deadly force against students. So, in other words... You know, under this, a student could go up and just spray, you know, AHS sucks on the side of their school there, and they could be shot for it and killed under this under this proposed bill. That that would that would be my my assumption. You know, you know, it, it would be possible. Yeah. So so yeah. That's essentially what they're saying. Protecting school property? What? Right. You're allowed to kill somebody because they might, I don't know, be writing on top of their desk or something? Yeah, that that doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it doesn't to me either. It's just, and the thing is, it's Texas. They just want to kill people and get away (laughs) with it. It's what they live for, man. You know. And for a while, it was legal in Texas for them to just execute the mentally handicapped people. Just, just you know, just you know, hey, you know, I'll go sit, you know, as Robin Williams put it, go sit on Santa's lap, Timmy. You know, and, and that's horrible. And 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 if, and one thing this article does point out that Texas already permits teachers and other school employees to carry guns on campus. So <laughs> very uneasy, but also very fucking important. Uh, if you're over there in Texas and and, and, and you have a, a way of telling these people, hey, yeah, we don't want this, make your voices heard. In fact, all of these, all of the government stuff we talk about, I, I don't say this often enough, but all the government stuff we talk about, you know, you want to see change, make your voice heard. Talk to your Congress people, talk to your senators, all, all of them, and, and say, hey, you know, we, we do not want this. Get, you know, get that big corporate dick out of your ass, depending on the situation. And listen to the people that you are representing, because it's because of us you have your goddamn job. Yeah. So with that, that is our news, and that is going to be our show for this week. Cause yeah, holy shit, I I'm pretty sure we went well over time, and not just four or five minutes. <laughs> oh, but that's okay. If if we keep up, I might actually officially extend the time. But um, but yeah. So uh, thank you guys for listening. 
Um, final thoughts from either of the two of you before we officially get out of here. About how it's stupid to allow teachers to shoot students to protect property? I think we're all in agreement on that one. Okay. I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> all righty. So, so, again, thank you guys for listening. If we wanted to find Holly on the social media, where could we find her? You can find me all over the place as GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. That's Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, what have you. And my Facebook fan page is Holly Christine Brown. You can also find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet. And where could we find Kat? You can find me on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And you can find me on my other podcasts. Um, God, I have so many of them now. But um, you can find me over on uh, What the Fuck on 1201beyond.com and on Nerd to the Third Power over on channelawesome.com. Sweet. And if you want to find me on the social medias, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblrs at gomer 21 X. I do have a Facebook fan page just for myself, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Go give it a like if you haven't done so already. Um, you know, updates and things go here and there. And I even, even got a gallery of, like, all the artwork that has been done um, – for me, you know, like title cards and everything, if you want to look at some really cool artwork and maybe commission one of them. You know, hey, you know, Becky's not the only one who's done artwork. They all could use the commissions, and, and I'm sure they would very much appreciate it. Um, you can also find me on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, both of which have their own pages, uh, you know, Tumblrs and, and Twitters and Facebook pages and all of that good stuff. And I believe that is about it for me. So once again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time, and hopefully next time I won't be quite as much of a motor mouth. I need to work on that. <laughs> so until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and the cat signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McCloyd. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.